US band. Hello and welcome to Doordarshan News. I am Sadan Sibbal and let's go to the top stories which is making headlines. US band India's largest drug maker ran back to from producing and distributing drugs for the US market from its stone cell facility in Punjab. Stock tanks 20%. Market snap four-day winning streak. Nifty closes below 6,300 level. Sensex loses to 40 points. All 13 sectoral indices on BSE end in negative. And from Davos 2014, BRICS ministers insist economy still strong despite turbulence. Finance Minister P. Chidambaram expresses confidence that the country will grow at 6% this year. Russian Vice President says BRICS is taking a nap, not dead. Hello and welcome to Business Wrap. On this last day of the week, I'm Sidhan Sibal. Let's go straight to the top stories, which is making the headlines. On to the Dalal Street, the last day of the market saw. Uh, it losing its steam. The market snap a four-day winning streak. Key benchmark indices edge lower as the market sentiment was hit adversely by RBI Governor Raghuram Rajan's comments that inflation is a destructive disease, which is forcing the central bank to keep interest rates high. Weakness in Asian and European stocks and overnight losses for the U.S. stocks also hit sentiment on the domestic bourses. The market breadth, indicating the overall health of the market, was weak. All 13 sectoral indices on BSE dropped. Sensex lost 240 points to end at 21,134, while the Nifty closed 79 points down at 6,267. The BSE mid cap index was off 1.7 percent. The BSE small cap index was off 1.81 percent. Both these indices underperformed the Sensex. Top losers on the chart were BHL, Tata Steel, Tata Motor, SSLT, and LNT, which were down by between three to two percent. There were only three gainers on the chart, that is NTPC, Bajaj Auto, and RIL, which were up by about a percent. On to global market action, the European stocks edged lower, and in the choppy trade on Friday, key benchmark indices in France, Germany, and UK were all by between 0.34 percent to 0.53 percent. On to Asian stocks, the Asian stocks edged lower on Friday amid concerns that the earning growth will miss estimates on signs of weakness in China's economy. Key benchmark indices in South Korea, Singapore, Indonesia, and Hong Kong were down by between 0.36 percent to 1.31 percent. Taiwan's Taiwan weighted rose 0.04 percent in a choppy trade. More or less, the markets were on an upward move throughout the week. The Sensex on Wednesday closed at a record high of 21,338. The only day of the week when the markets closed in red was today. More in our weekly market this week. Began on a positive. By good quarter three numbers of IT major Wipro, the markets ended the session in positive territory. Sensex gained 141 points. Nifty also rose by 52 points. The positive momentum continued on Tuesday. Sensex gained 46 points. Nifty gained 10 points. Market sentiment improved after the government decided to sell stake in Hindustan Zinc, which might narrow down budget deficit. The bull march continued on Wednesday. Sensex closed at record high of 21,338, gaining 87 points as buying emerged in pharma, metal, and banking stocks on expectations of strong corporate earnings and rate cut by the Reserve Bank of India. Nifty also rose by 25 points to end at 6,339. This was Nifty's highest level in nearly three weeks. Thursday, the upward journey continued. Stock markets gained for the fourth day in a row. Sensex closed its fresh record high of 21,374, gaining 36 points on fund buying, driven by strong corporate earnings by Larson and Tubro and housing finance major HDFC. The broad-based National Stock Exchange Index Nifty rose by seven points to end at 6,346. 
But on Friday, the market saw fatigue. Sensex lost almost 100 points in opening trade. Ranbaxy Laboratories plunged as much as 20% in morning trade after the U.S. health regulator said that they are barring imported drugs from an overseas factories operated by Ranbaxy Laboratories due to quality control violations. Business Bureau, DD News. And from the Dalal Street to the Min Street, the rupee fell 73 paise or 1.18 percent to 62.66 against the US dollar. This is rupee's lowest closing in over two months. Time for a short break. After the break, we will tell you what were the top business stories of the week. Stay tuned. गाड़ी की चाबी तो ले लो आज नो चाबी आज से मेरा कारपूल स्टार्ट हो रहा है सॉरी यार लेट हो गया सुनो हाँ थैंक यू थैंक यू क्यों मेरी डायमंड रिंग के लिए डायमंड रिंग अब तुम कारपूल कर रहे हो इसका मतलब हर साल हम फ्यूल बिल पे पचास हजार तक तो बचा ही लेंगे अब इतने में तो डायमंड रिंग आ ही जाएगी आखिर बात तो एक ही है ना कार पूल करें और सालाना पचास हजार रुपए तक बचाएं ब्रॉट यू बाय पीसीआर एंड पब्लिक इंटरेस्ट सुन तो मुझे क्या सुनाना चाहते हो जो सुनाओ मेरी सौतन को किसको अरे वही तुम्हारा मोबाइल फोन जिसे सुबह शाम दिन रात चिपके रहते थे और कहते थे किसान कॉल सेंटर से बातें हो रही हैं हम्म अच्छा ये बात है हाँ क्यों क्या हुआ अब बात नहीं होती क्या अब तो झट से बात हो जाती है ऐसा क्या हाँ अब तो ज्यादा लाइने और खास तकनीक के कारण खेती के माहिरों ऐसी तुरंत बात हो जाती है और अगर कभी लाइन व्यस्त हो तो अपनी समस्या फोन पर रिकॉर्ड करा दो वहाँ से फोन आ जाता है और समस्या की हल्का मैसेज भी आ जाता है ये देखो आ गया अरे वाह इसका मतलब इंतजार की घड़ी अब खत्म हाँ। तभी मैं सोचूं कि आजकल मुझ पर इतना प्यार क्यों आ रहा है <laughs> कृषि संबंधी समस्याओं का अपनी भाषा में तुरंत हल पाने के लिए पूरे भारत में किसी भी फोन ऐसी हेल्पलाइन नंबर आरोप संपर्क करें किसानों का दोस्त किसान कॉल सेंटर Hi, welcome back. The U.S. has banned India's largest drug maker, Ranbaxy, from producing and distributing drugs for the U.S. market from its terms of facility in Punjab. The U.S. drug regulator said that there had been significant manufacturing violation at the facility. It alleged that the staff had retested materials after those items had failed initial tests in order to produce acceptable findings. Other Ranbaxy units have also come under scrutiny by the U.S. in the past. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, has previously banned products from the company's facility in Punta Sahib, Devas and Mohali. In September last year, the U.S. FDA imposed an import alert on Ranbaxy's Mohali plant in Punjab for violating current good manufacturing norms. Meanwhile, a statement from Ranbaxy said that the company is disappointed with the recent U.S. Food and Drug Administration action and would like to apologize to all stakeholders for the inconvenience caused by the suspicion, suspension of the shipment. Well, lots of things happened this week. Biggest of them all was the start of the annual World Economic Forum in Davos. Over two and a half thousand businessmen, politicians, academicians and besides many others have gathered in the Swiss mountain resort of Davos for the 44th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum. More to our business stories of the week in our weekly Business This Week. Week full of news. On Monday, Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh held review meeting in New Delhi with chief ministers of eight northeastern states. During the meet, the Prime Minister expressed satisfaction on the progress of infrastructural projects in the northeastern region. 
The Maharashtra government announced a 20% power cut for all classes of consumers, domestic, industrial and agricultural, but the decision was not applicable to Mumbai consumers. And the world's second largest economy, China, came out with dismal 2013 GDP numbers. The dragon grew at its lowest pace in 14 years at 7.7% in 2013. On to Tuesday, Petroleum Minister Veera Pamoyli said that Cabinet may consider raising LPG cylinder cap. President Pranam Mukherjee conferred the JNNURM incentive awards and lauded the efforts of the Housing and Urban Poverty Alleviation Ministry for working towards making cities more inclusive. Wednesday was again a newsy day. In a bid to rein in on black money, RBI announced withdrawal of all currency notes issued prior to 2005 by March 31, 2014. World Economic Forum annual meet began amid fragile recovery. Pope urged Davos elite to serve humanity with wealth, while Finance Minister P. Chidamram said India is likely to grow at about 5% in current fiscal. Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif approved MOU with India on electricity trade. Meanwhile, India summoned Acting High Commissioner of Pakistan on suspension of trans-LOC trade and bus services, and it was raining airfare discounts. Airlines cut prices by up to 50%. SpiceJet, Air India, Indigo and GoAir offered cut price tickets as airline fare war raged again. Thursday, lots of news from Davos. Commerce and Industry Minister Anand Sharma said that government is targeting to create as many as 100 million skilled jobs in the manufacturing sector by 2022. Planning Commission Deputy Chairman Montek Singhalu Alia said the next government will have to take forward the process of fiscal consolidation to keep the economic momentum intact. UPA Chairperson Sonia Gandhi asked the government to look into demands for a cut in customs duty on gold and relaxation of a rule linking imports of the metal with exports. Hopeful of launching flights in India in the next two to three months, Air Asia Chief Tony Fernandez said that the airline would introduce dramatically low fares in the country, which would be cheapest in the market and take air travels to masses. And finally, to the last day of the week, Samsung Electronics, the world's biggest maker of mobile phones and TVs, has reported a drop in quarterly profit for the first time in two years. Net profit was $6.8 billion in the October to December period, down 11% from the previous three months. Argentina's currency, the peso, has seen its sharpest one-day fall since the country's 2002 financial crisis. The peso fell 11% to stand at an official rate of 8 pesos to the dollar. Business Bureau, DT News. Well, time for another short break. But after the break, we'll tell you all that is making news at the World Economic Forum 2014. राजीव आवास योजना के अंतर्गत स्लमवासियों को मिलेगा अपना घर अपनी जमीन पर अपना घर और मालिकाना हक अरे छोड़ो ये सुनते सुनते मैं बूढ़ा हो गया ये देखो अब जिएंगे सम्मान से जिएंगे शान से राजीव आवास योजना का सहारा है भारत सरकार राज्य सरकार एवं स्थानीय निकायों का साझा प्रयास राजीव आवास योजना सबको हक सबका सम्मान बच्चे और उनके माता पिता बाल यौन उत्पीड़न के प्रति सजग हों तो अनिष्ट से बचा जा सकता है बाल यौन अपराध से सुरक्षा अधिनियम 2012 के तहत अपराधी को सख्त सजा देने का प्रावधान है Hi, welcome back again. The World Economic Forum is a talking shop. Arguably, though, it's the best of its kind in the world. The concepts date back to early 1970s and is very simple. Take top business leaders out of the pressure cooker of their job and bring them together in a remote valley in Swiss mountains. When it began in 1971, the Davos summit focused on European economic issues, but the agenda has gone to include wider global concerns. While 
All the rich and famous from across the world have assembled there for the annual talk fest and the networking for business. Many top Indian business leaders like Mukesh Ambani and Rahul Bajaj have given this year's World Economic Forum annual meeting a miss. Despite these dropouts, Indian delegation still runs into 125 business and political leaders, which makes India's present fourth largest after the US, UK and host country Switzerland. Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif cancelled his visit to the World Economic Annual Meeting after a deadly Taliban attack in his country. German Chancellor Angela Merkel, who was one of the star attractions here last year, had also cancelled her trip after a skiing incident. But what is the feel like there at the Davos? Business leaders gathering for their annual high-profile networking forum in Davos are feeling a bit better about their company's prospect and a lot more so about the broader economic outlook. But they still have a long list of worries. At Davos, there's a promising outlook on global growth and Matt Damon gently poking fun at the proceedings with a mock film award speech. This is a really, really big honor and I want to thank the Hollywood Foreign Press Association Wait, sorry, that's the wrong speech. <laughs> this is the Golden Globe speech I never got to give. I know I didn't win, but to be honest, I kind of want, want to give this speech anyway. It's pretty good. There's this part where I talk about what it was like working with Michael Douglas, and I get kind of emotional. It's really good. And then I get a big kiss from Bono. The Hollywood star was getting an award for work towards providing clean, safe water in developing countries. Just one theme among many, but with the focus very firmly on recovery. A PwC survey shows 44% of business leaders see the economy picking up this year, up from 18% the year before. Though there's still a way to go for the world's financial system. There's talk that old world, developed economies, the US, Britain, Germany and Japan will be the new locomotives of growth. Eclipsing Brazil and other emerging markets as the boom in commodities, the so-called commodity super cycle that has so boosted their economies splutters to a halt. Well, I think there are a couple of things going. One is, in fact, the slowdown in the emerging world. Um, but the second is that the developed world, they've sort of taken their bitter medicine and they're beginning to recover. So the U.S. is recovering, Germany is recovering, U.K. is recovering. And so, so the, the worst is behind us as a, uh, you know, in terms of the developed world, the advanced economy. So, and and though growth might be on the upturn, one of the biggest Davos concerns of them all is unemployment. Reportedly up 5 million last year, meaning over 200 million people around the world have no job. Business Bureau, DD News. The global financial crisis had hit the BRICS economies, that is Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. But these countries are likely to rebound, with India likely to clock steady GDP growth in next three years. According to leaders of these economies who were speaking at a session at the 44th World Economic Forum annual meeting, the BRICS economies would rebound over the next few years, despite having been hit to varying degrees by a fallout from the global financial crisis. Russian Vice Prime Minister even said that the BRICS are taking a nap and are not dead. Ministers from the BRICS economies defended their growth prospects on Friday despite waves of turbulence caused by the tightening of monetary stimulus in the U.S. and concerns about a potential cash crunch in China. Exuding confidence, Brazilian finance minister said that BRICS will continue to lead the global economy. BRICS is the acronym used to group emerging players Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. Their economies were thrown into disarray last May when the Federal Reserve warned it may turn off the taps of easy money that had shifted foreign investment to the developing world in search for better returns. Talk in Washington of stimulus tapering moved investment back to the richer countries, sending currencies plummeting in most BRICS economies and sparking talk that the emerging world may have replaced the Eurozone as the world's biggest headache. But Praveen Godran, the South African finance minister, said that though there are going to be some shifts due to tapering, hopefully those shifts were not going to be shocks. And after last year's scare, governments had this time prepared the ground to anticipate the slowing of easy cash. Rather than a change in monetary policy, Russia's deputy prime minister said the Eurozone, Russia's biggest trading partner, remained the big problem as it continued to grow far too slowly. Liu Mingkang, a former Chinese central bank deputy governor, said a slowdown in China and fears of financial shocks there should not be underestimated. 
Finance Minister Minister P. Chidambaram expressed confidence that the country will grow at 6% this year, 7% in 2015 and 8% in 2016. Leaders of BRICS, whose economies were hit by the global financial crisis, also expressed confidence that their country was likely to rebound with India leading the way. Business Bureau, DD News. So positive outlook from the BRICS economies, but Iran is being talked about big time at the annual event. Iran's uh, President Hassan Rouhani talked about constructive engagement with the U.S. during a speech in Davos. But will this make Western firms scramble to do business with Tehran? Here's a report. The fact that he's here at all is news in itself. An Iranian president at Davos is a rare sight. But last week, a deal with six major powers to restrict Iran's nuclear program in exchange for a partial lifting of economic sanctions came into force. And now Hassan Rouhani is inviting European countries, particularly major energy groups, to seize economic opportunities in Iran. Rouhani took office last August and quickly began an international charm offensive, speaking at the United Nations a month later. Promoting business was clearly a key aim this time. He privately met oil and gas executives before making his speech. My view in regards to social, economic and political issues is one of moderation. This is a lesson I have learned from Islam and have deeply practiced in my political life. It was based on this that I decided to take part in our presidential election. Iran's nuclear prowess has long been the big issue. The last president was thought to have a weapons program. Rouhani has again said that's not the case. The U.S. says Western companies should not regard Iran as open for business. And most sanctions, including very restricted access to the international financial system, remain in force. There are also foreign policy issues. Rouhani may have been welcome at the World Economic Forum, but he was shut out of another Swiss conference. His support for Syria's president excluding him from United Nations sponsored peace talks in Montreux. Business Bureau, DD News. Let's take a look at what the world leaders had to say at the World Economic Forum. Uh, the European leaders discussed trade protectionism at the World Economic Forum in Davos. Let's listen in what the European Commission president had to say. Now, it's true that the work is far from completed. We are not saying we are out of the crisis. We have turned a corner, but we cannot say we are out of the crisis with such high levels of unemployment. And so that's why we need to keep the momentum on the reforms namely to uh, fight with success these un unacceptable levels of unemployment. No complacency and if... On to some Asian voices, Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe painted an upbeat picture of the Japanese economy but warned that the military tensions in Asia must not threaten growth in the region. Remember, Japan and China recently have been facing lots of issues in their relationship. A peace and stability was shaken in Asia. The knock-on effect for the entire world would be enormous. The dividend of growth in Asia must not be wasted on military expansion. We must use it to invest in innovation and human capital. South Korea's president emphasized on the importance of what she called economic creativity. A creative economy harnesses the creative ideas of individuals and marries them with science and technology, with IT. It promotes the convergence of different industries and the confluence of industry and culture. On to Africa, President Goodluck Jonathan of Nigeria admitted stability is essential to invest in the African continent. The majority of the African countries are now enjoying stable governance. And I always say, before you talk about economic growth, the political stability is key. Because investors who didn't want to invest in areas or countries that they didn't know the next president. Well, that was all from what made news in Davos. Now on to some other business news of the day. India's economy is projected to grow at a slower than expected rate of 5.3% this year, according to a United Nations report, which said that the country's slowdown may have bottomed out. The global economy is projected to grow at a pace of 3% in 2014 and 3.3% in 2015 
and compared to an estimated growth of 2.1% in 2030. The Reserve Bank of India Governor Raghuram Rajan called inflation a destructive disease that was forcing the bank to keep interest rate high. The strong warning came against in, against ahead of the, the central bank's policy review, which is on a Tuesday. The state-run Airport Authority of India Chairman V. P. Agarwal has been removed from his post as he was opposing privatization of many airports in the country. The government has issued an order to Alok Sinha, Joint Secretary in the Aviation Ministry, to take additional charges uh, of the handling of the airports. In the jewel to three private discoms, the Delhi High Court today refused to stay the city government's decision asking the CAG to audit their accounts. The court also asked BSES Rajdhani Power Limited, BSES Yamuna Power Limited of Reliance Anil Dhirubhai Ambani Group and Tata Power Delhi Distribution Limited to cooperate with CAG in auditing and ask the top auditor not to submit its report till it hears the discounts petition on March the 19th. The National Green Tribunal today directed uh, the South Korean major POSCO will not cut any trees in a village in Odisha for developing its uh, 51,000 crore rupees steel project till the state government gives the final forest clearance. San Pedro Relit Expert Committee of, on Reviewing of the Working of Prasar Bhati today presented its report to Information and Broadcasting Minister Manish Tiwari. The minister had constituted the expert committee for the purpose of reviewing the institutional framework of Prasar Bharti, including its relationship with the government, its continuing role as a public broadcaster, and measures needed to ensure technical upgradation of the organization. The convener of the committee is Prasar Bharti CEO Jawahar Sarkar. The committee also suggests ways of using the new media to deliver digital content both in broadcast mode and in a demand-based mode like YouTube. Well, time for a recap of the headlines. US bans India's largest drug maker Ranbaxy from producing and distributing drugs for the US market from its, from its stronsa facility in Punjab, the stock tanks 20%. Market snap, four-day winning streak, Nifty closes below 6,300 levels, Sensex loses 240 points, all 13 sectoral indices on BSE end in negative. And from Davos 2014, BRICS ministers insist economy is still strong despite turbulences. Finance Minister P. Chidamram expresses confidence that the country will grow at 6% this year. Russian Vice Prime Minister says BRICS is not taking a nap, is not taking a nap and is not dead. Well, that's all in this edition of Business Wrap. Thanks for watching. Namaskar.